there is this one thing, and this, uh, this is kind of impromptu, but I, I would like to do this for you and, you and your audience and try to, um, try to make a point impromptu, if that's okay for you, around food and what happens. Soils oh, and Man, Yearbook of Agriculture, 1938, Soils and Men. It's a real old green book and it's tattered. It's, it was produced by the uh, Department, United States Department of Agriculture. It was written in 1938 and it's a big biblical book. You can see it's huge. Um, I want to, and I, it's, uh, luckily it's a signed copy, so you can't see it, but it's a signed copy. October 10th, 1938. But on the inside of this book, um, in the foreword, I just want to read you something that is, is really interesting, and then I want to tell you what that means. In the foreword of this book, it says, The earth is the mother of us all, plants, animals, and men. The phosphorus and calcium of the earth build our skeletons and nervous systems. Everything else our bodies need except for air and sun comes from the earth. Nature treats the earth kindly. Man treats her harshly. He overplows the cropland, overgrazes the pasture land, and overcuts the timberland. He destroys millions of acres completely. He pours fertility year after year into the cities, which in turn pour what they do not use down the sewers into the rivers and the oceans. The flood problem, insofar as it is man-made, is chiefly the result of overplowing, overgrazing, and overcutting of timber. This terribly destructive process is excusable in a young civilization. It is not excusable in the United States in the year 1938. What? We know what can be done and we are beginning to do it. As individuals, we are beginning to do the necessary things. As a nation, we are beginning to do them. The public is waking up and just in time. In another 30 years, it might have been too late. The social lesson of soil waste is that no man has the right to destroy soil, even if he does it in his own fee simple. The soil requires a duty of man which we have been slow to recognize. In this book, the effort is made to discover man's debt and duty to the soil. The scientists examine the soil problem from every possible angle. This book must be reckoned with by all who would build a firm foundation for the future of the United States. For my own part, I do not feel that this book is the last word but it is a start and a mighty good start in helping all those who truly love the soil to fight the good fight. So the reason I read you that book, what the hell happened? This was 1938 when this book was written. If you look at the contents of this book, it talks about no-till, it talks about soil health, it talks about uh, erosion, it talks about cover crops, it talks about regenerative agriculture. In 1938, they're talking about regenerative agriculture and agro, uh, agroecology. That's unheard of. How, how, how did they have this wisdom? So what happened? 1938, I want you to think about it. What happened? It's not a, it's not a guessing game. You know what happened? 1939 was World War II. That's what happened. And because of 1930, 1939 and World War II, the war machine or the war industry became the agriculture, agricultural industry. So everybody knew, I doubt it. I doubt it that farmers or anybody read this book. I doubt it. It's too biblical. It's too much. And, but if you are a farmer and you didn't read this book, boy, you missed out because all the wisdom was right here how to do it right, how not to mess up. And, and the reason I say this is the war machine took over the agriculture and the food industry because everybody went off to war and so we still needed to produce for, food for the war and for other things. No, and no matter 
at any time in human history, throughout all human history, when we have known the right way and we've been on the right path, we've known the right things to do, the right practices, every time, it never fails, always something will happen. Brexit, the pandemic, Ukraine war, the Gaza war, the Trumpocalypse, the, an election, uh, Putin, Bolsonaro, Shea, it doesn't matter. Something always happens. When humans are in the right path, they know what's doing, bam, something happens to take us off that path. And I want to give you an example. So I mentioned COP21. COP21 was the Paris Agreement, the 2030 agenda in, in Paris. It was the conference of the parties where they made the agreement to kind of move to 1.5 degrees, to keep us at 1.5 degrees of warming. What happened a couple days before the Paris COP, the most, the best time, what, what happened? The terrorist attack, you remember? Just a couple days before, Al Gore was doing the live broadcast from, from Paris. The, uh, he calls it the 24 hours of reality, talking about what we need to do. And everybody was excited, saying, we're getting ready. We're going to have this. Uh, they knew it was coming. And guess what happened? He interrupted his broadcast because there was a terrorist attack in Paris and several people died and there was a, a bunch of stuff and they thought that they were not going to have the that climate conference. They thought they were going to cancel it because presidents and people from all over the world were coming and they were worried about security. But thank goodness they had it and we went on for the Paris Agreement. But then guess what? What happened? The next COP22, the next climate conference was in Marrakesh, COP22 in Morocco and Marrakesh. It's a, uh, the climate conferences are always two weeks long. It's really interesting. Um, and on the, the second day of the first week, Tuesday, Trump was announced that he made it for president. He was going to become president. And what was his thing? He said, we're going to go out of the Paris Agreement. We're not going to do it. That's what he said. And so everybody at the climate conference, COP22 in Marrakesh, they were crying, freaking out. He's going to go out. What are we going to do? And then we spent Trump's entire term as, as UN people, as climate people saying, Oh, what are we going to do? We're going to go out and U.S. is, and, and it took us off. And so what I want to be, mean with these examples, not just this book and not just, not just the cops and stuff, when we're on the right path, when we know what's right, when we know what to do, that's how our world works. There's always something going to be there, a war, a pandemic, a president, some crazy that's going to try to sidetrack us. And so if we could just realize that and set our goals and our ambition to the world we want to achieve and not let us get sidetracked. I know a war and a pandemic is horrific for us, but you know what's more horrific? To die of starvation, to die of a planet that's no longer in existence because food and agriculture have ruined it. To get, in a, to, to get sidetracked by all sorts of things and it's a sad sidetrack because people die and it's a horrific thing. I'm not making light of it at all. But there's always going to be something that takes our eye off of the future that we all want to go into.